Writer Ministries, a ministry where health, wealth, and wisdom prevails. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. And good morning, everybody. How many are glad you're in church with me today? Praise the Lord. You ought to be really excited because I brought God with me. Ha ha! God is here in Jesus' mighty name. How do I know He's here? Because I invited Him. Say, praise the Lord. He's with me everywhere I go. Amen. Is He with you guys? And if He's not, let's get you born again in Jesus' name. Let's get going. We're going to be talking about double portion. More double blessings. Amen. 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 So let's, put, let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're our teacher. You've given us revelation, knowledge, and illumination, and comparison in the Word of God. And all the people of God said yes and amen. amen. So how many know the kingdom of God operates by laws? And when I talk about laws, I'm talking about information. So we all know that there's a law already in effect on the earth. It's called gravity. How many know that works? How many know that there's physics that we know that there are certain things if you move an object and it's not going to move until it's been applied by another force? We know those are laws. We understand the flow of water. We understand air. We understand a whole lot of things about our body. We understand a lot more now about our spirit. But we need to understand the kingdom laws. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So, how many know people perish for the lack of knowledge? Not us, we're gonna, we got the knowledge. It says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And if we stop and understand, the knowledge of God is what he's talking about. You may know something about the earth, you may know how a car operates, but you don't know the laws of God and how they operate. And you're going to have some problems if you don't. The prophet of God spoke, how can I help you? What do you have in your house? Most people would say, I don't have anything. And that's why I came to you. That's the reason why the prophet showed up. What did the lady say? I don't have anything except this jar of oil. So the prophet told her what to do. In 2 Kings chapter 4, we see in verse 3 and 5. Then he said, go borrow the vessels abroad, of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him, shut the door upon her, upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. Isn't that amazing? If you listen to the prophet, you have good success. Say, thank you, Lord. So the lady's husband had sown into his life and into that prophet. So he has given. He had worked for the prophet, which gave legality for the blessing. So the prophet knew he had a legality to take care of the need. So this is the interesting thing that just came to my heart. You are part of this church. But other people come in. Do they have the legal right for me to mis minister to them? Yes, when they ask for it. But if they just come in, don't ask. Sometimes people don't understand. So here you are in this church, which gives me a legal right because you've submitted yourself to the leadership here. So I have the legal right to pray for you and minister to you without having to ask for it. Does that make sense? So when people ask me to pray for someone, I always check to see if I have a legal right. When someone asks for prayer, for Uncle Joe, for example, we know that Uncle Joe has a legal right over his own life. Is he in faith? We don't know. But God is merciful and the gifts of healing work for that man. So a lot of times people, well, I want to stand in, in proxy for... But is that person in faith? Does that person believe they will receive? You need to ask some questions. 
Like the prophet says, what can I do for you? What do you have in your house? What are the legal rights that gives me an opportunity? People ask you to go to the church, uh, go to the hospital and pray for people. That person in there has to give you legal right. Yes, I need prayer. Yes, I want you to pray for me. That opens the door. You follow me? Yeah, just walk over and let me pray for you. How many can see? You have to know something about that person in the name of Jesus. Amen? Now, when the jars became full, she asked for more jars. The son said, there's no more. That's when the oil stopped. we got to understand, when the Lord says the healing power of God is here, when does it stop? Oh, I have to go to the bathroom and I'll come right back. No, don't you go. Because it's here. And then they come back and, well, will you pray for me? I'll pray for you, but the anointing stopped. There's the timing and a place for things. We've got to put it in perspective, okay? So what would have happened if she had a thousand jars instead of just a few? <coughs> Excuse me. She would have had a thousand jars full of oil. When people are under pressure, all they want is alleviation of the pressure. I just need my rent paid for this month. What about the months after that? We get into that boat. We, we think, oh, if I only had $10,000, I would be... I sat down and figured out the 10000 that I have coming, how I'm going to spend it. And then I realized I need more than 10000 I need 10000 every month. So get out from under the pressure what most people think. But who sets the measure? She set the measure by the number of the jars. She could have looked at all those jars and said, wow, that's a lot of jars. Or she could have said, that's not enough, go get more. We set that measure. Now, the prophet told her to sell the oil. Money is in the marketplace. This is the only place it is created. Prophet put her into business. And that's a way to get out of debt. Say, thank you, Lord. We set the measure. We set the measure by the amount that you give. God is limited by your measure. The law of God limits the harvest. So when you come up with just a, a little fraction and you know you've got more money because you're going to spend it on this, you're going to spend it on that, but what I got for God is just this little measure, then you set that measure. You came in and said, I got five jars, when you know you could have had a hundred, but you only brought five jars with you. You set that measure and now you limited the Holy One of all to help you. So the amount that you give has to be connected with faith. Let's look at that in Mark chapter 12, verse 41 through 44. Now this is an important scripture. I hope you get this. What's Jesus doing? He sat over against the treasury and beheld how. <coughs> Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is he watching you? How you put money in the, into the... Um, offering. He beheld how the people cast money into the treasury and many that were what? Rich cast in much and there came a certain poor widow and she threw in two mites which makes a farthing and he called unto his disciples and said to them verily I say to you listen up that this poor widow had cast more in than all they which cast into the treasury. All right. For they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want, 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 did cast in all that she had, even all her living. <coughs> Excuse me. What's important to understand here is a lot of people look at this and they go the other direction. Well, all I have is a dollar. Really? Did you pray and ask the Lord, that's all you have? That's all it is. So you cast in all your living with just a dollar? Don't get condemned here. I'm just trying to show you. We are setting the measure when we walk in here. Gee, Lord, this is my $5 offering for the whole week. Everybody look at me and say, five bucks isn't going to cut the mustard when your internet costs you 100 And you're only brought in 120th. So the fact of it is, God wants to bless you more abundantly than you think or ask. But yet, like Miriam preached this morning, we have yet to understand 
the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. So which takes greater faith? To give all or a large donation of your wealth? Which takes greater faith? The measure is set by your faith. Okay? What touches your faith? When you give, is it touching your confidence of God? Your measure is tied to how you give. The amount and your confidence in God. Well, Lord, I'm only going to bring a buck in because I don't think you're really going to do it. And I know I have to work for a living to pay for all the food that I want to buy and go out. And How many know that your confidence in God is not where it could be? Anybody know where I'm at? So my confidence in God is this. Lord, I only have a dollar. And basically, that's all I got. There's a difference. But Lord... I know I've got 50 bucks, but I don't want to put it in because I don't really know if you're going to supply all that 50 bucks back more than I give. See, your confidence in God isn't where it could be. How many have been there, done that, and know exactly what I'm talking about? I don't think so. Until you get to that point, what changes us from giving? This is the Holy Spirit speaking. Because you got what you wanted, and you stop. You got what you wanted, now you stop. We've all fallen in that boat. Lord, I've been praying for weeks and I finally got what I wanted. So I stop. That's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to grow and get bigger and more abundantly to help others. Say, thank you, Lord. So anytime you want to increase from your current level to a higher level, you're going to have to change your giving out of your comfort zone into a place where it demands that God's word operates. Your higher amount of giving has to be mixed with more faith. Well, Lord, I'm only going to set aside $100, and that's it. Instead of saying, Lord, I want to put it this $100, would you help me bring more in? Because I want to to have more money coming to me than just $100 or $1,000. I know I want $10,000 a month, every month. What do I have to do to stretch my faith to get to that boat? So I know that God will bless me. How many know that God's going to take you to heaven? I'm the only one who got my hands raised. The rest of you haven't raised your hands because you don't know if your God's taking you to heaven. What makes you confident of that? What makes you confident that you're going to go to heaven when you die? What really, really, really makes you confident? I'll give you the answer. It's the still small voice on the inside of you that says, you are a child of God. Right? I've only got one person. The rest of you are kind of out to lunch. What's going on? It's 12 o'clock. I get it. All right. That confidence that you know you're going to God is the same confidence you've got to have on the inside that God's going to take care of you. Right? Do you have it? Watch your confidence fly right out your feet when it's time to put a hundred bucks in the offering. Five hundred. Thousand. Well, if I had it, would I give it? Would I be able to do it more often? So I need a new level of faith, Lord. I need to grow. And I'm telling you something, God will help you to grow so you can have what it is you have been asking for faster. How many would like to have it the moment you ask for it? You got it. Jesus did. Right? What, did, what, did, what happened to him? Everything was given to him when, as soon as he asked for it. He got it. Why? Because he's confident in God. That's where we need to be. Say amen. amen. So how much do I give to set the measure? Right? Let's check out the word. In 1 Kings chapter 17, let's look at verse 10 through 15. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And she was going to fetch it. He called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die, because we don't have anything else. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, 
Go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. Now I got news for you. How many of you are going to bring me $100 when I ask for it? Really? Let's, 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 let's bring that up. 500 That's all you got. That would be like, how am I going to get my bills paid if I give them 100 bucks? How am I bills going to get paid if I give them 500 bucks? See, we've got to hit, this, hit this, this mark in your head. Like, that's going to be impossible. There's no way I can survive the rest of the month. See, this is the problem we run into. Instead of saying, I know God will take care of me. Because I'm going to give it to you first and not last, right? <coughs> Everybody with me? Are you bringing in your tithes first to the Lord? Like it says here, bring it to me first. Bring it to God first. Or is he last place? For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And everybody knows that's three years. According to we know. Maybe three years, six months. That's a long time. And God kept it continually. Now, that's the word of the Lord being spoken. We got to, and she did according to the Saint Elijah, and he and her house did eat many days. We got to realize when the Holy Spirit's speaking to you through your pastor, through your Bible, you got to respond appropriately. <coughs> Excuse me. All right? The prophet said, Do not be afraid. Listen to the word of God. Why did he say, bring it to me first? Why did he say that? It needs to be transferred into the kingdom of God. When he took it first, it came under the dominion of the God's kingdom. Then God could multiply it. Giving is the beginning, not the end. Giving opens the door for God to legally bless you. Say, thank you, Lord. What will your answer look like? Your answer will look like an idea, a plan, a direction. Peter, go out there and catch the fish. Peter, there's a gold coin over there. Start a business. Your answer here on earth will be by revelation. What is God saying to you, revealing to you that you didn't know about? How he wants to do it for you is what you need to obey. Say, thank you, Lord. This lady didn't know that she needed to get oil and vessels. She didn't have that understanding. This other lady here didn't know she was supposed to get a little bread and make it all that I have and give it to the prophet. That seems foolish because now I won't have anything to eat. I give it all to him. That's reasoning talking to you to not to obey God's word. Does that happen to us? All the time. We got to make a change in our faith. Say amen. Can you identify your nets? Nets are what Peter used to go out and catch fish. Can you identify what you're going to use? Amen. Come on. Can you identify what God is filling? How is God going to take care of you? Have you got the insights from the Holy Spirit yet? Where is the legality for God to fill in your life? Give. Sell to the poor. And come follow me. Miriam and I are doing that. And we're watching the blessing of the Lord. Come on. So, how are you going to pray for your vision? Most people will say, God's going to take care of me. And the answer is yes. But how are you going to pay for it? How are you going to get the money? So we think, I have to go work. We're not thinking, how is God going to get you the money? See, we're, you're missing a step. Okay? Everybody says, well, God's going to do it. Okay, that's good. But tell me, where are your nets? How is this going to show up? Everybody look at me and say, by revelation, the Holy Spirit is speaking to my spirit. Well, how is to do it? Just like the lady here got revelation from a prophet on to make a cake first. And when she did and obeyed, obedience brings forth the blessing. Say, thank you, Lord. Amen. So where is your pot that he's filling? What are you giving to him to fill? What is your measure? Say, thank you, Lord. So, how many people are disillusioned about giving because they don't know how the kingdom laws operate? Remember I started this off? 
the laws of, uh, of God, op God's kingdom operates by laws. What law do we need to hear from the Holy Spirit so we can in, 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 invoke it, get it started? Quote, unquote, activate it in the name of Jesus. Oh, uh, gee, I don't know. Well, how, how long have you prayed? Oh, a couple of moments. Really? What is, how long does it take for you to get revelation knowledge? Now, we'll pray up here after singing because we've done some singing. And then we do some praying in the tongue, and we get some words, we get some stuff, but we haven't really got narrowed it down. That takes a little bit more time. How many are with me? We're almost finished. God will give you the plan. The Holy Spirit will instruct you on where to set the measure. Okay, so how do you get this information from the Holy Spirit? It's called praying in tongues and get the interpretation. Come on, everybody. I want you to wake up and start saying, I need a parking spot, so I'm going to pray, ask the Holy Spirit for one, and sure enough, there's a parking spot. <laughs> and God only does parking spots. There's so much more that we can be doing. All right, Lord, uh, I'm going to come to church next week. I know I set aside 20, but is, do you want me to bring in more? Sarah needs money, Lord. Am I just going to give her a $5 bill? I'm giving. What's the measure, Lord? We don't even ask. We've got to ask in tongues, interpretation, and pray with belief. Say amen. 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 Okay. When was the last time someone here prayed and said, we need to give Nina some money? You didn't know because you didn't ask. You didn't say, well, Pastor Robert needs $500. How come no one heard it? I'm just showing you ideas because no one's taken the time to pray. Amen. What do other people need? We are a giving church. From now on, we are a giving church. Say amen. amen. Give, and it shall be given back to us. Pressed down, shaken together, running over the place, right? Shall men give back into our bosom. By the measure that we set is which will be met back to us. Say thank you, Lord. So, pray, interpret your tongues to get the answer. Grab hold of the principles and watch the Lord bless you. In Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord. That's what makes you rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. All right? God wants to bless me like he blessed the lady with the oil. God wants to bless me like he blessed the lady with the cakes. Amen. God wants to bless me like he blesses uh, Leroy Thompson. God wants to bless me more abundantly than I think or ask. So how do I know what those blessings are if I don't ask? So it's up to me to ask. And then God's going to test you and make sure that you are willing and obedient even to the cross. Remember? Jesus was tested right up to the end. Then his name was highly exalted above all. So were we any different? No? No? So what we need to do is give with faith. And when giving in faith, there's always an anointing. And that anointing will prosper you. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much in the name of Jesus for this awesome outpouring of the double, more double blessing in Jesus' name. We're the ones that set the measure. Holy Spirit, we really need to be trained up. Get us out of the same old rut. Oh, I'm just going to bring in $5. I'm just going to bring in $20. i am just going to bring in 50 Get us out of the rut, Lord, and help us to pray, to hear what you say to do, and so that we can be obedient and receive the blessing of the Lord. And all the people of God said, yes and amen and amen. Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries. We're glad that you watched our latest video, and we want to invite you to become a partner with our ministry. Partnerships mean that you pray one for another. We pray for you. You pray for us. You send us a seed offering, we'll send you a DVD. Our DVDs will help you to become ministers of God. And as a partner, we'll also notify you when we have our next healing explosions in your area. 
or we'll let you know where they are so you can come and participate with us in Jesus' name. We want to teach you to become God's minister in healing the sick, casting out devils, the things that Jesus did. Amen. Our ministry is to help the body of Christ to grow and become what God has called each person to be in Jesus' name. So we're asking you to be part of our 250 partners this year. Let us know. So give us a call at 503-652-2650 or get on our website and check out rider.org. You'll be surprised of all the goodies we have on there just for you. So we thank you for being our partners. We invite you to come back and see us more often. God bless you. We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at writer.org. That's writer.org. And join us again next time for more of Writer Ministries with Pastor Robert Writer.